Hello everyone, this is video number one in how to disassemble and reassemble the Honda GXV 160 OHV. Okay, now this is a Honda, so everything on this should be metric. I doubt we're going to find any standard nuts or bolts. If you're using a 9 16 and half inch and stuff like that, then you're probably using the wrong wrench or socket. You should be using 8, 10, 12, 14, 17, 19 millimeter I believe is what's going to be holding this engine together but this is the first time I've ever had one of these engines apart. I want to tell you right now that one of the best things you can do is if you have a cell phone take pictures of everything on how it looks as we progress through this so that way you can look back and see what part went where and stuff like that. I will be using an electric impact gun to help speed through the process of disassembling this engine. You can work by hand using, that to, using the tools that I have provided. <clears throat> Whenever we stop these videos, I'm going to stop at a certain point and then I want you to watch the video and then you are going to do the exact same thing that I did and you are going to come to a stopping point and then you're going to take a picture of it and you're going to send it to me. You can take a picture of your cell phone uh, or with the laptop or uh, any other thing like that you want to use and send it to me to prove how well you're coming along on this. Okay? Uh, you should have basic hand tool set uh, in a toolbox, a, probably a pair of pliers and metric wrenches. This right here is going to be a nut and bolt organizer tray. Yours should look similar to this. And you can make these trays as big or as small as you want to. Okay? And this is how we're going to keep everything organized. Alright. So, I went ahead and took a few bolts loose just to get us so we everything speeds through a little bit. The first thing I want you to do is get the pull rope off of there. Okay? This is how you start the engine. And by doing that, there's three bolts. One here. One here. And one right there. Okay. I pulled all three of them off. Yours should look something like this. And I'm going to place mine right here. All right. Now I'm going to take my bolts, put them in that bin. All right. Those are 10 millimeter, by the way. Now I want to look at getting the air filter housing loose. So these right here are called wing nuts. Take these wing nuts off. And you pop this open, and inside, this is your air filter assembly, okay? I'm going to take the air filter assembly, and I'm going to put it right there, because that was the next thing I took off. I'll take the wing nuts, and I'm going to put it in the same bin as I did for those three that go on top. All right, now I want to get this cover off, okay? So I'm going to start at the front here. This is a tin. Take that tin off. There's a 10 bolt here. There's a 10 nut. And there's one here holding the dipstick tube on. Now look, the one that holds the dipstick tube on is that long. And the one that holds the fuel tank on is that long. So I don't know if you can see the difference. So there is a difference in length. Plus they both, if you look, have washers. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the same bin. This is for the front bolt, this little guy. And here's your nut for the back. All right. Now that I've done that, this should lift off of here. And now I'm going to take this part, and I'm going to stick it right here. So this is the order I take things apart. So if you reverse the order, usually that's how you put it back together. Makes sense? All right. <clears throat> Let's get this fuel tank off. That bolt's already undone. And this right here is a 12. So get out your 12 wrench or your 12 socket, whatever, fit it on there, loosen that thing up. And I'm going to spin this off the back here. And it looks like this, okay? I'm going to put that in the same box as the, as the rest of them I've been using. All right. Get yourself a pair of slip joint pliers. Of course, this thing wants to stick on there pretty good. Just be careful. Wiggle it on and off like I'm doing right there. All right. 
This is the fuel tank. Take the fuel tank. We're going to sit it right there. That's the next thing that I took off. All right. Let's talk about engine stuff real quick. Engine needs four things. Fuel, air, fire, compression. All right. So fuel, that's your fuel tank. On this particular engine, fuel tank comes, you fill your uh, tank up full of fuel, and gas comes down here to the carburetor. Carburetor enters the combustion chamber, and that's how, the, that's how fuel gets there, okay? On most vehicles, um, probably 80s and on up, are fuel injected. This right here is carbureted. Carburetors, you can still find those on small engines such as four wheelers, lawnmowers, dirt bikes, chainsaws. Uh, mini bikes, stuff like that. Uh, you can even start to find fuel injection on four wheelers and other small engines as well. Carburetors are a thing of the past. You will not see very many of them out there anymore these days. Okay, so fuel enters through the tube, goes to the carburetor, or if it's in a car, be fuel, a modern car, be fuel injection, and enters the intake manifold and enters the uh, combustion chamber. Okay. <clears throat> This right here is your air filter housing. This is where the air comes in. So air comes in here to the carburetor as well, and the air fuel mixture gets put into the combustion chamber, okay? Then it has to come out the exhaust. If you were to stuff this exhaust or stuff this air hole right here, this engine would not start or run very badly depending on how bad it was stuffed, how bad it was plugged, okay? So if you have something restricting your air, like let's say uh, you have a car and it's running real, real, bad and you uh, haven't changed out your air filter in a while, you may want to look at your air filter first because it needs air to breathe. Another thing that could be is that if you have an exhaust clogging up, maybe your muffler is clogging up or your catalytic converter has failed on you and it's clogging up, you'll notice either no start, low power, uh, stuff like that. So you need airflow. Next thing you need is going to be fire. This right here is called a spark plug wire. Right here is into a spark plug. This is a coil, and a car would be called a coil pack. The coil pack tells the spark plug, tells the spark, uh, or gives spark to the spark plug on a specific time. It'll say, okay, it needs spark now. It'll hit spark to it, send right to that spark plug. That will ignite the fuel air mixture on the compression stroke when the piston comes up and the valves are closed. And then that will actually have a quote-unquote explosion inside your engine, which forces that piston back down, okay? Then when it comes up for the exhaust stroke, it has to come out the exhaust. So we just learned you need four things for an engine to run. Fuel, air, fire, compression on a gasoline engine. Now, on a diesel engine... That's known as a compression ignition engine. Your gas vehicles are known as a spark ignition engine. What that means is this right here has a spark plug coming right here, giving spark to the engine to ignite that fuel mixture. So you need a spark spark plug. Diesel engines, they rely just on solely compression. Okay? So there is no spark plug. There's a glow plug but all that does is heat up the combustion chamber in order for you to start it. So it's, it relies on so much compression when it compresses the um, air fuel mixture together, it ignites and then forces the piston back down. All right, that is all I want you to know and do for this part of the video. Stay tuned for other videos coming soon. And please, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, don't, do not work ahead because you may take off things you do not need to take off or do things you shouldn't do. As you work along, take pictures with your cell phone. Okay, this goes here, this goes here, okay? Use the technology to your advantage. All right, guys, thanks for watching.